Yeah, I think um, for for us, you know, uh, and particularly Trey, you know, at some point your kids are going to rebel on their parents because they just, oh, yeah. we've been on them their whole life, clean your room, <laughs> you know, hey, what these grades about, yeah, you know, yeah. you want to for your, you know, so you need somebody that's going to speak to them. It could be the exact same thing you're saying exactly. as a parent, <laughs> but it came from somebody else that they respect right. outside right. of you and, and they'll do it. They, yeah. they, re they receive it better. Um, and I think that village is is so critical. And I think today's parents are so um, they want to be the ones to get them there. They want to, and you can't do it by yourself. You mm -hmm. you need a village. You know, I look at uh, you know a, a current player like a Sean Jones went to Marquette from mm -hmm. Gahanna. Yeah. His village is strong. You yeah. can tell. I don't even know who's in his village, but I know, right, you know. just from from talking to his mom and mm -hmm. I, the village is strong. And so you have to have that village, um, whether it's pastor, whether it's uh, mentors, whether it's uncles, mm -hmm. you got to have a positive village that understand the game, understand this process and, and go and guide your children the right way in the way you've been guided. Hello, everyone. This is Arthur Tim Brown, the book uh, Uncommon Athletes, and I'm excited to have with me um, a young man who agreed to be on the show. Uh, uh, this young man was a great uh, basketball player in his own right here in here in Columbus. Uh, and then there's two, uh, three, three great children uh, uh, who have gone on and played sports as well at, at both the highest level. And so I wanted to uh, talk to uh, Benji Burke today, and I wanted to remind everyone: please subscribe to the channel and hit that like button as we continue to uh, put these. Uh, uh, inspirational stories out so benji welcome to the show thanks thanks for having me tim i appreciate it it will be great uh, uh you know uh you know everybody knows about you your son your daughter and all that stuff but people forgot about you i want to make sure <laughs> they don't forget about you and after this your father your father played as well right yep he played at east he played a, a couple of years at east high school wow so and uh did well was really you know played a champion middle so yeah, yeah. okay and he people came. don't realize back in the day middle school was tough back in the day Man, they 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 even had their uh, box scores in the paper. Wow! And you know it had to be tough if they yeah. print box scores. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, uh, they just told me the box scores in the paper of middle schools or junior high. They would call right, it. Right, right. So you've been a, a you know been a great city league player. Can you talk about the competitiveness of, of of Columbus City League basketball back in the day? Talk about how competitive Man, it, it was. was. It was real competitive. I mean, we talk about it all the time. Where. Um, Every Tuesday and Friday, it was not a night off. Even with the teams that weren't so great, mm -hmm. everybody had players. You you had good guards. You had you had top wings, and it was just a tough, tough situation where you couldn't take a night off. You know, today's game has changed a little bit, where you might have a couple city league teams that you know just might not uh, stack up due to busing or, or things mm -hmm. of that nature. But back then, man, it was it was really really tough to play and even make a varsity squad. Wow. Uh, let alone, you know, play on a Tuesday, Tuesday and Friday night. Yeah. As we think, as you think back in in those days, what, what would you say? What was one of the big differences between then and now? Would you say? What, what was one of the big differences? A couple of things. Well, I, I, I think a lot of us grew up playing together that went mm -hmm. to high school. So we went to elementary, went to middle school, and then we all was at the same high school. And I think you, you, it gets away from that now. Yeah. You know, and then now there's more schools, uh, right, you, you, get, you know, OCC, look how they've grown and, and, right. and Columbus has grown outward. And so kids are, you know, moving away from the city. And uh, and so a lot of the talent is not in the city, if you will. Yeah, that's a good point. I think also what you see is as, as a young player, you were looking forward to, you know, playing at East, playing at East more, yeah. playing at, uh, you know, you look forward to that time, you know, you, you go and watch those other guys play. I mean, we don't even want to talk about playground basketball, you know. Playground. That's that's where we, you know, it wasn't workouts. It was playground. You had to <laughs> – it was hard to get on the court there. It was hard to get on the court. You know, and so we we played till the, till it got dark uh, yeah, outside, yeah. you know, on concrete. So yeah. that's how we developed our game, you know. And today is just a little different. You know, they have it a little bit better, of course, but right. – you know, it made us grittier. It made us yeah, uh, yeah. more hungry, I think, because of how we came through the system. Right, right. You know, you, you and your wife, Rhonda, being, both being athletes, so what advice did you give your children when they first start playing sports? You know, when they first start playing, of course, you want your children to have fun. I mean, mm -hmm. um, no child is going to have uh, a great career or anything if they're not having fun, if you're just pushing it on them. 
And so that was our first thing. And once they gravitated towards whatever sport it was, then, you know, we kind of kind of started developing them. So they could be good in that sport. And and uh, Amani and Trey both like basketball. And um, Amani got it honest because she sat on our bench, AAU, every summer. Right, right, right. She got a chance to see, you know, the Jerry Selinger team. She got a right. chance to sit on that bench. And she was young, and she got a chance to fall in love with the game that way. And so mm -hmm. watching her brother come up, I think she just took on the game as well. Right. Speaking of that, as we, as we speak on that, what advice would you give to uh, parents who have some children that are interested in sports, uh, you know, may see a little potential in what people tell me, you know, they can do this. What advice would you give those parents? I think the biggest thing is just to be, have, have a real expectation of what level your, your child is at. Mm -hmm. um, and as you play the game, I think it'll come out. Um, and then from there, I just think, you know, as a parent, you want your child, if they're going to college and they're getting recruited, you want your child to go to the right school, mm -hmm. kind of the right fit for that child, because no child is going to be happy if they're not, if they're not playing, if they're not, you know, you don't want to spend two years at a, at a university just to transfer when you just, you know, you picked the wrong school. So I think as a parent, you got to really, really do your homework. Um, know how long the coach has been there. Is he a young coach and, and looking to move up and not going to be there when your child is a sophomore? I mean, those type of things are are critical. Mm -hmm. um, how many how many point guards they got? How many forwards they got? You know, and so, I mean, you, you just have to do your homework uh, when it comes to the recruiting aspect. Yeah, that's good. That's a good word there. As we talk about recruiting, uh, let's talk about academics of athletes and, and talk about a little about your high school experience. I heard your story a little bit about yours. Can you talk a little bit about academics, how important that is? It's very important, um, you know, and, and again, most high school athletes, even myself, we, we didn't take it serious until we, you know, the light bulb goes off for some mm -hmm. and it goes off sophomore year for some might not go off until your senior year. But um, I think, you know, it's just it prepares you for life. It, it prepares you for challenges in in life where, you know, you're getting up every morning. You, you're almost going to a, like a nine to five. They kind of mm -hmm. got it structured around that. So um, even to get to the next level, you got to have some uh, you got to have grades. Yeah. And so um, you got to have good study habits. You got to have, you know, you got to be at bed at night. Things mm -hmm. of that nature where, you know, kids can kind of see a future you know, you got to put them on that path to to put that plan in place. Mm -hmm. when, when did you guys realize that Trey and Imani both had, had the potential to play at that next level? When, when did you realize that? And um, they were both kind of different, but mm -hmm. Trey, uh, you know, it was a whole bunch of dads that we mm -hmm. all had a son, same, same grade, same age, and we was just pushing them yeah. and, uh, against each other, training with each other, doing all kind of stuff. But I think once Trey... Um, got to his junior year in high school. Um, at that time, they were number one in the country with the number one player in the country, and Jared. Mm -hmm. and, um, I just think he, it, it, you know, he had a chance to play Division One at that at that time. Um, and, and he got his offer. He got an offer from Penn State his sophomore year. So it mm -hmm. kind of started turning, you know, towards his sophomore year and 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 going from there. Amani was just a little different, but she um, she had some offers her junior year. Um, and again, me and Rhonda talk about this all the time, how, you know, that was our baby. So we was like, we right, got right. to pick the right school for her because girls are a little different than boys, mm -hmm. um, how, they, how they approach the game. You know, right. it's not as serious. You know, they, right, they right, can right. Go to high school and then after high school, hey, 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 mom, dad, hey, I'm, I'm going to the game. Right, <laughs> and we're right. like, what? And so right. but, uh, we, we kind of backed off and let Imani kind of handle uh, what she could until we had to step in, but I think she picked the right school at OU. So, yeah, I, 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 Amani was on here on the show at one time, and I heard the story. You know, she was like, "I'm done with this. You know, I want to be a young lady. I want to go to the mall. I want to have fun. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna do this basketball thing." You know, but but she yeah. hung in there, and it worked out well for her. It worked out great yeah. for her. You know, yeah. it worked out well. You know, you were blessed to coach a great AAU team. Uh, yeah. Uh, when uh, when 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 Trace Jared those names you mentioned, can you talk about that experience? What that experience was like from a coaching standpoint and from a player standpoint as well. How was that experience? Man, it was awesome. I mean, I tell all coaches today, even if you're coaching high school, get a chance to coach high level AAU basketball because it's a training not just for the kids that are are playing, but as a coach, you have mm -hmm. to really coach and be. Uh, on your X's and O's and, and timing and everything 
um, the experience was great because, I, again, I had a chance to build a team with Jerry Watson, of course, um, for, for what, three years of high school that they were, they were probably top 10 all three years in, in the country. Mm-hmm. And so um, it, it, it was able to, we was able to get kids uh, scholarships and looks that typically wouldn't happen in their mm-hmm. high school. Right. Um, because they, you know, they might play in a rural area. We had a kid named Nate Anderson, 6'9 kid who played at Taze Valley. And uh, people just wasn't going to see him, you know, mm-hmm. and we picked him up, man. And he ended up going, I believe, to North Carolina, Charlotte, mm-hmm. uh, had a great four year career just from uh, the Peach Jam. He had a great Peach Jam and uh, uh, in Augusta. And so, you know, those experiences are are huge. And, and that's what it's about is getting these kids an opportunity to play where, you know, they can they can develop and, 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 and become young men. Mm-hmm. Can you talk about the the life experiences that those guys receive from from playing uh, AU basketball, and then just relationships and how they're still together today? Can you talk about yeah. that, that bond? That is huge because I think AAU it pushes you so hard. It, it, again, that's another element of preparing them for life. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you 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 got to play, you got to you got to sleep, you got to have great habits on the road. Mm-hmm. So it's preparing them for the next level of college. Um, and Jerry Watson does a great job of that where, you know, we just talked about this. AU gets a bad rap, mm-hmm. but I think it's because they're, they're talking about the, 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 the level below, um, where people are just trying to put teams together and play in tournaments and, and, and they putting these tournaments together. When you play high level AU, it's rewarding. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think Trey would be where he was at without, without all Ohio red and, and the, and the schedule that Jerry put together for us. Trayvon Jackson went to Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. You know, we had Travis Trice and Braxton Miller when they were younger mm-hmm. on our teams. And I think that helped develop them. And so um, I just think AAU is critical. If you, you, you again, you got to get with a, a, an organization that understands that AAU circuit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it is a circuit. It definitely is a circuit, and, and understand getting with the right program. Yeah, you know, and, and just the experience, and just the experience alone, and not just, and really, you got to turn to see how good you really are. You know, at that yeah. level, you know, you get a yeah. chance to play against some players that you hear about, you know, you don't even know about. <laughs> you know, like where he come from, I know, you know, yeah. and all those type of uh, and his life experiences that, that those young men were able to get. Right, uh, Trey has had a, he's had a great journey. Uh, your son Trey had a great journey in high school. Uh, college, MBA. Uh, first of all, let, let's just break all three of these components down. Let's first start with the, with the high school experience, you know, being on that number one team in the country and all that. How, how was that experience, you know? Man, it was great. It was great. I think uh, him him being on that team and being the point guard with J.D. Weatherspoon and Jalen Robinson, and it, 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 was, it was a great experience. Um, you know, Jared bought the, 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 the lights and cameras, Right, and, right, right, right. You know, all they had to do was perform. And so yeah. you know, to be able to play on ESPN twice and mm-hmm. uh, win a state championship, you know, it was, you know, you couldn't have asked for a better high school career. Mm-hmm. Um, and and Sag did a good job of, of keeping that team, you know, playing at the level that they should have played at, you know. And so uh, I, I think, I mean, what can you say? You know, yeah. Trey, Trey had a chance to, and then they left, the, the big two left, and then yeah. Trey had a chance to, kind of be the guy his senior year but he still had Jalen and Devin and some size and some wings and mm-hmm. lots and those guys so um the it, it was a program you know mm-hmm. it was a program and I think uh I, I I know I get this wrong but they they never lost to a high school a city league high school team ever in mm-hmm. in in their four years right um, and I think it, it might have been like nine eight or nine years they never yeah, lost a high school, yeah, yeah. city league Team. so yeah yeah it was a great run a great run now looking at back at that high school experience what what life lessons did, did Trey learn and uh, I guess we're kind of speaking for him but what, what kind of life lessons did you see him develop that helped him when he went to that next level in college well I think um he ended up you know getting a trainer and uh mm. just practicing with the high school wasn't enough mm. to go play in the big 10 so he he would train before school um and then go to practice and so he ended up getting the habits that he needed, his mm-hmm. work ethic, to get the mm-hmm. habits that he needed to play in the Big Ten and be successful. Mm-hmm. You know, once we once um, we picked Michigan, um, he didn't just want to go there and just, you know, just have a role. He really wanted to, to be special. And mm-hmm. so, honestly, Trey put the work in. And mm-hmm. so him putting that work in, 
Um, first year, you know, uh, made a freshman all Big Ten, and I think he made third team all Big Ten his freshman mm-hmm. year. So mm-hmm. he that let him know that the work is, is working. Right, and so right. now he was, if you will, kind of addicted to, hey, I got to keep getting better every day because if I don't, these other players are. And so when he came back his sophomore year, um, he was able to be the guy and, and run that team and, and ran it all the way to the championship. Came up short, but I just think his work ethic and habits uh, were developed in his high school career right. uh, going into college. Yeah, he was he, he was more than the guy his sophomore year. <laughs> That's an <laughs> understatement. That's an understatement. Now, here's the million dollar question: Was that a clean block? And was that a clean? Oh block? man, was that a clean? <laughs> I mean, you can turn every angle, Tim, and it, <laughs> he didn't touch the guy. I think the, I think the ref thought he was going; they was going to collide, but they yeah. did. Yeah, and right. uh, the block was clean, and that kind of that took our. We had some momentum. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So that, that took oh, our yeah. momentum. But uh, yeah. Trey's reaction says it all. I mean, he oh, don't yeah. he don't react to about, about a whole right, bunch of right, right. His reaction says it all. So yeah. yeah. So, so as parents, as you guys were going through that journey, you know, what, what were you guys feeling as you were going through this college, that college journey, Man, college was, experience? It was like a, you're in a dream that you yeah, can't yeah. wake up. And it's a yeah. great dream, you know. Yeah. He he just went on a magical run. The team they went yeah. on a magical yeah, run, yeah. and uh, you know we it's it's crazy because uh, we was down. I want to say 13 mm-hmm. to Kansas in the Sweet 16, maybe with a minute and a half. Yeah. And and Glenn, big dog Glenn Robinson, I was sitting with him and he was like, man, for us to win this, everything got to happen perfect from this point on. Mm. And that's exactly what happened. And we went to overtime and ended up winning and making our run. But, um, you know, it was just the memories. You, you don't forget them. You know, mm-hmm. going to the final four, getting there like that, it's just, it's, it's special. And, uh, you know, those guys are really tight. You know, they, they, mm-hmm. they talk and talk about that magical round. Shoot, we still talk about it. So, right, right, right. Yeah, it's a special time. March, March Madness for a reason. It's really madness. Yeah, it's really madness. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. I'm working with a, a group of student athletes, football guys, and talking about that bond, how to build that bond you know, as a team, how important that is uh, for those memories. And, and and you want to look back on those experiences, you know, still be close with your teammates, you know, still have that bond, the guys you've been through the, through the war with, you know, how yeah. you need to build that bond. Uh, and then Trey goes on to the NBA. Uh, can, can you talk about how you and your wife have, have encouraged them all along during this journey, you know, the role that parents play in this? Yeah, I think I think early on in the NBA, we were, we were really hard on him because we wanted him to be successful. Mm-hmm. Again, we didn't want him to just go to the NBA. We want him to have longevity yeah. in the NBA. It's hard to stay in the NBA more than three years. Yeah. Um, and that's just, those are facts, you know? And so we just wanted him to have longevity. And so... When you get to the NBA, a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of kids, uh, players, their habits go away because mm-hmm. they feel they made it, they made it yeah. you know? And so now they take their foot off the brake. And this is when you really got to put your foot on the brake just to stay in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we we was hard on him the first couple of years. We would always be out there flying out there to Utah. And um, and again, this it's a mental challenge because... Mm-hmm. You know, this is not college. It's not high school. This is a business. So yeah. you're almost a commodity. They're gonna they're gonna trade you, and 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 you know whether they talk to you or not. So um, we just had to prepare him mentally, and I think we did a good job because he's a fighter. Yeah. Uh, so whatever you know, a, a, per, a player or team might say, one thing they can't say is that he doesn't fight. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so he's a fighter. Um, you know, I don't know if you know this, Tim, but he decided to go to the G League one year. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. a contract. Yeah, mm-hmm. they had a contract with. Um, I want to say OKC offered him a contract. He denied it. He said, mm-hmm. "Dad, I just need to rebrand myself." Mm-hmm. And I kind of tried to discourage him because I just know how hard it is to come mm-hmm. out of the G League. Right. And uh, he said, "Dad, trust me. I I know what I'm doing." And so I had mm-hmm. to back off. He was like, "You know, mm-hmm. we had a serious talk." He's like, "I know what I'm doing." And so I just gave him my thoughts about, you know, this is what you. These are the numbers you need to get out of the G League. Right. And he, right. G League and did just that and uh the GM for the Knicks called him up and and you know he had a year and a half with the Knicks that was a great run for him mm-hmm. and um so yeah no that's good that's good sometimes we got to back up you know to, to, to start all over again so to speak and, and yeah. just really I think for Trey and, and for these young guys and sometimes you got to humble yourself you know yeah. here's a guy who's been in the league you know and he looked wait a minute now he's in the G League you know this guy was a 
they saw player of the year, you know, in college basketball, you know, and he's in the G League, you know, but but God, but the real deal is God has a plan. He has a plan. a plan and a purpose, you know. We just yes. gotta trust, we just gotta trust in him. And speaking of that, can you talk about how important faith is in your family? It is very important. And I think um talking to our kids, that they, they were the ones who really put faith in, in, in God in their life early on. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Trey Trey is big on, you know, faith and and, and again, when he made that move to the G League, he just said, Dad, God got a, a plan for me. This, mm -hmm. and when he said that, I had to back up. Right, right. Yeah, so, um, and Amani as well. So I just think, you know, having a, a close-knit family, mm -hmm. uh, we, we grew up in the church, um, and, and you know, the circles and, and, and community around, you know, my kids were, were good because they, they're around me. And I mm -hmm. think, you know, we need that village to – you know, I, I couldn't do it alone. Me and Rhonda couldn't do this alone. Um, we, we had certain people that was in our lives and in their lives that, that really helped them. Yeah, I think that's so important as you talk about that. Talk about that importance of, of the village, you know. Uh, we know you guys are a close family and how important is that village and putting your children, I think parents need to hear this and understand how important is putting your children around the right people. You know, right. Who, 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 can, who can maybe, there's certain things that we as parents can give them but we know there's some other things that they need and we got to find, we got to seek out those persons to give it to them and, you know, make sure they get all that to be well-rounded. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I think um, for, for us, you know, uh, and particularly Trey, you know, at some point your kids are going to rebel on their parents because they just, oh, yeah. we've been on them their whole life, clean your room, <laughs> you know, hey, what these grades about, yeah, you know, right. you, for your, you know, so you need somebody that's going to speak to them it could be the exact same thing you're saying as a parent, <laughs> but it came from somebody else that they respect right. outside of you and, and they'll do it. They, mm -hmm. they, re they receive it better. Um, and I think that village is, is so critical. And I think today's parents are so, um, they want to be the ones to get them there. They want to, and you can't do it by yourself. You, mm -hmm. you need a village. You know, I look at, uh, you know, a, a current player like a Sean Jones went to Marquette from mm -hmm. Gahanna. Yeah. His village is strong. You yeah. can tell. I don't even know who's in this village, but I know, right, you know. just from, from talking to his mom and mm -hmm. I, the village is strong. And so you have to have that village, um, whether it's pastor, whether it's uh, mentors, whether it's uncles, mm -hmm. you got to have a positive village that understand the game, understand this process and, and go and guide your children the right way in the way you've been guided. Right. Yeah, that's important, having the right people. And some, something you said that jumped out at me is that you got people who, who know this game. You know, mm -hmm. whatever whatever that area is, it doesn't have to be sports, whatever that area is, who knows it, you know, who's been there, done that, so to speak, right. you know, and who can share the, their experiences uh, with that. Oh, this has been great. Uh, last, as we wrap up, I want to know, um, this, this thing for me, I wanted to have you on here, really is for parents, really mm -hmm. for parents. Now, I want, can you give some advice to uh, both, for, let's say you had a parent and a player, you were sitting down there talking to them about this process, you know, how this process works. Could, could you just give some words to it? Let's say you have a family of a student athlete and a parent, because they're both hand in hand. They got to work together. Right. Can you speak to them on how important it is for particularly these young men to pay attention, you know, and, and, and the parents role in this, how to work together for the, for the success of the child. Of the player. Yeah, I think, I think a couple of things come, comes to mind. I think um, when you're talking about a student athlete and, and, and again, we want to see what level they're on, mm -hmm. but I think the parent has to really do their homework and understand this game whether they need help with somebody, somebody can teach them, but you have to be able to understand the dynamics of recruiting, understand what level your child is at, understand um, who's in your corner, who's going to help you. You know, some coaches might not be recruiting it in their thing. So you got to reach out to you again, to your village. Mm -hmm. and, and these kids that are, are serious about the game, their habits got to be there. You got to be able to train. You got to be able to not, you know, go out with your friends on, on Saturday night because you, you in the gym. If you're trying to get to a division one level, these are some of the sacrifices and, um, and the parent got to make the sacrifice because mm, yes. they're driving them. They're, yes. they're doing these things. You got to sacrifice to, to, for your child to have success at the next level. And so whether it's academics, whether it's tennis, whether it's everything, once mm -hmm. they decide, Hey, I'm going to college, the sacrifice comes from the whole family, the parents, mm -hmm. the, 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 the group around them. And so, I think that's the biggest thing. They have to be able to sacrifice some things to to get their child off to a good start and at their next level. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to commend you and Rhonda for the great job that you guys have done uh, 
And it's not just with your children. Of course, your children are great, done a great job with them, but it's the example for others. Okay. And that's what I really appreciate, the example that you and Rhonda have set for other parents and, and, and your children have set for other children, you know, that if you just follow the plan, you know, the yeah. fruit doesn't fall far from the tree, you know, you know. And, and, and we got that. We, we, we was the one that we looked at it, uh, the 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 plan ahead of us, you know, yes. when we were going through it, we saw what what needs to be done and so we followed the plan. So Yeah, yeah and that, that's how it works. So I want to commend you all for that. And then lastly, I want to thank you all for giving back to the community. You know, I know Trey comes back. He just had a camp uh, out of Reynoldsburg and he comes back and he, you know, always pouring into somebody and you and Ron are always available. If someone needs something, you know, some advice, whatnot, you guys are always there for, for the community that you haven't forgotten about, you know, uh, persons and that, that next generation coming behind. You mentioned Sean Jones uh, and I'm sure you had that conversation with his mom or Sherry, you know, about, about that process and how it works, you know, uh, because just sharing your wisdom, your knowledge with others. So I want to thank you guys for that. Uh, for being just part of this community. Yeah, but we're looking forward to uh, what God has next for you guys. <laughs> you know? Yes. I know you got some grandbabies coming down the pipe. Yeah. <laughs> get, the next, get that next generation ready. I already know. <laughs> I already know. I already know. All right, Benji, thanks for your time. I appreciate you. Oh, man, Tim, I appreciate you doing what you do, man. We, I mean, I know a lot of people tell you, but, man, this is, this is making a difference, what you're doing. So we definitely appreciate all of this. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a great day. All right, thank you. Yeah.